So let me talk about shared responsibility model. I, I take some example to explain it. So let me try to take that example so you can relate what a shared responsibility model is. Now, I live in London and I live into an apartment building. Right now, this is a new built apartment, and what we have that that building management has given us some facility. What they have given that there is door phone, so I can check from my apartment that who is at the main entrance and open door only for them. Second, we have security cameras, so cameras will be checking the lobby place and verifying and sorry, recording whatever interactions are happening. Then what we have, like we have access card. So I live on seventh floor and to access my floor, I need to have access card to operate the lift. And obviously there is a lock and key given to me for safeguarding my apartment. So this is the responsibility of building management to provide me, right? But does it mean that I do not have any responsibility? Answer is no. I also have my responsibility in this particular case. What my responsibility would be in this particular case that, hey, I always check before opening the door, right? Hope you're getting the idea. Security cameras, I should make sure that they are working fine and they have space for recording. I need to ensure that I keep my access card safe and I do not lose it. I have to ensure that I always lock my apartment before I move, move out. That exactly is shared responsibility. So they are responsible to provide me the tools and the services like door phone, security camera, access card. And I need to ensure that I use it for my benefit and ensure that I am able to safeguard my important stuff. And that's what my responsibility is. So you can't blame if you kept your door open without putting a lock, then you can't blame that, hey, you provided, you didn't provide a lock. So you provided a lock, but what you have to, to do, you have to also ensure that you use that lock in a proper way so that you would be able to safeguard. So that's what shared responsibility is. Let me now go into the actual content of it. So this is what a shared responsibility model is. What we are trying to present here that AWS is responsible for managing the security of the cloud. What do you mean the security of the cloud, the physical infrastructure, the zones where your data is being stored, the locations where your data centers are running, we would take care of securing everything for you. So physical security becomes AWS responsibility. We would ensure that we provide you the best possible security measure and you don't have to take my word for it. We go through lots and lots of rigorous uh, processes to get security in our data center and we follow a lot of guidelines and lot of compliance policies to ensure that we are able to provide the best of the breed security. So security of the cloud is what is responsibility of AWS. So this is what AWS responsibility is. Now AWS will give you all the tools. As a customer, you have to now take care of your part because you decide what access I'm going to give to Ash Ashish or Alex or Prasad. You would decide, hey, what ports I am going to open into my firewall. So that would all become responsibility of your own self, of yourself. So you would be ensuring that I am able to provide the required security and required complications on that. Now, let me explain what I'm going to talk about now. So this is shared responsibility and shared responsibility ensure that you are able to do your part and others, uh, AWS or cloud provider would do their own part. So that is shared responsibility. Now the line which I'm seeing right now for compute storage database, the orange one is all about AWS. The blue one is all about customer, but this line can shift. What do we mean by that? So this responsibility, depending on the services, may change. Like here, if you see, we are utilizing here, let's say some platform services, like here as an example, if you see. So these platform services are being maintained by you. But if you use some services like uh, Elastic Beanstalk, you may be having a cloud provider do this for you. So yes, exactly. It can change a little bit about how platform application and identity would be managed or who would take care of operating system patches. So if you deploy a EC2, you would take care of operating system patching, but if you are utilizing a Lambda function or maybe a, a, another service which we offer as a managed service, probably it would be done by the cloud provider. So this shared responsibility line of demarcation may change a little bit depending on where you are. Probably it would go up. 
so what i am seeing right now that hey i have my responsibility starting from there it may go up for some services and maybe only you would be responsible only for your customer data so it depends and we'll see some of the examples as we move forward in this particular process all right what is the next stop now here if i am talking about infrastructure services like like amazon ec2 so in ec2's case aws would give me the infrastructure and then i would take care of encryption server side encryption maybe network traffic protection ensuring that only particular port can come in so that would be all my responsibility so depending on the service your responsibility may be lesser or maybe more like for containers we would take care of operating system networking and firewall and you don't have to worry about it so when you are using rds we would take care of operating system patching for you you just focus on firewall and authentication associated with it then if you are looking for less customization or more customization you may choose a service depending on your use case like if you use services like aws kms or amazon s3 that time you don't have to worry anything about basic stuff we would take care of it so it depends on how you are utilizing your responsibility now for explaining it i i take an example again that how this responsibility is probably most of you travel right so when you are doing a train travel then you are responsible for your luggage is it right so you carry your luggage up to the coach you safeguard it you keep it safe that's all how you maintain your luggage now but when you are taking a flight then your airline is responsible for your luggage you hand over your luggage to them and then they would ensure that it reaches from point a to point b and nobody is using misusing it in that particular moment so that becomes airline responsibility similarly it's travel is same but depending on the medium you are using your responsibility may be higher or lower exact same thing happens with our shared responsibility model also so hopefully everyone has idea on that